Dr. Brendan Dunford, the manager of the Burren program, joins us now. Brendan, the, the program has been running since 2004. You started off with 20 farmers and you've really improved things and progressed since then. Can you tell us about the program and how many farmers are involved now and at what scale you're working at? Yeah, it's really grown over the years and nicely and organically. So we started off with 20 research farmers back in 2004 and today we have about 330 farmers who manage about 80 to 90% of the landscape. So it's quite a significant program at this stage and it brings about 10 million euros, I think, over the course of the program will be brought into the uh, burn as a result into farmers' pockets. So environmentally, we think it's a very strong program, but economically and socially as well, we think it's making a big change to the burn landscape. And how is that... Uh how are the how's the average farmer doing from that? You're saying ten million. What's the average farmer get, and is it is it a results based? Yeah, so this program is a little bit different. Uh, it's agri environmental programs go. It's very much targeted to the burn farmer, uh, and it's split into two payments every year. So one payment you get for doing work. So we give every farmer an allowance to do work to improve the environment on his farm. So that could be fixing walls, improving the water supplies, removing invasive scrub. And then we also pay the farmer um, a certain amount based on the environmental health of each field on the farm. So it's like taking your animals to the market. The better condition your field is in environmentally, the more money you get paid. Uh, so farmers on average um, across the board would get about 6,500 would be the average payment. But because it's performance based, um, it can be up to 15. So it can be as little as a few hundred or as much as 15,000. Depends on how much work the farmer does, how much, how, how, what condition his land is in and also um, the uh, size of the farm. At the moment, agriculture faces a lot of challenges uh, in terms of climate change and preserving biodiversity. How is the Burren programme fitting into that space and what can farmers learn from it and what can, what can the country learn from it? You know, we, we're cap reform coming down the road. Yeah, it, I think it's, it's a very interesting question because there is a lot of change and questioning about the farming at the moment and its role in society. We've always viewed farming in the Burren as being primarily about food production. But we also understand that farming is always about, also about delivering wonderful things like landscape, biodiversity, water quality, carbon sequestration, all of those things. And what we've done with the Burn programme is we've rewarded farmers when they deliver these outcomes. And that's very important because society really wants better biodiversity, better water quality, uh, a better climate. And farmers, in, in, especially in the Irish context, are the ones to deliver on the coalface. So the Burn programme, what's special about that is that it provides a mechanism through which we can reward farmers who deliver for the environment and deliver for society. So that's the lesson we have to share on that is that, you know, with targeted research, with proper uh, financial support and with a little bit of uh, encouragement, I think farmers can really deliver more than just food. They can uh, reinvent themselves as farmers and as an industry to be uh, providers of a range of ecosystem services as well as great food providers. And the Winterage Festival, which is coming up next week, is a really strong example of that. The, the festival itself, um, it's, it really, farmers get to see the reverse of, of what people are used to maybe at this time of the year where, where stock um, are brought in uh, to be housed for the winter. But what's going to happen next week down in Clare? So we have this amazing tradition in Clare called, and Galway called uh, Burn Winterage System, whereby farmers bring the cattle to the hills in wintertime. And people wonder, well, why would you do that? Well, the burn is one big tablet of limestone, so effectively it's like an underfloor heating system for cattle. Uh, when they're out there in the wintertime, they've got plenty of calcium rich water to drink, and they've probably got the greatest palate of, of, of vegetation and flora and fauna to eat, well, flora at least, to eat uh, out there in the grassland. So lots of nice herbs and stuff like that, which remain edible and uh, nutritious throughout the winter. So they have plenty to eat, plenty to drink, and they have what's called a dry lie as well. So I always think of the burn like a five-star hotel for cattle during wintertime. So we're celebrating that every year because it's important to acknowledge uh, the, the role that farming plays in this amazing landscape of the Burn. And we have a little festival every year called the Burn Winterage Weekend, where uh, the culmination of which is where farmers bring their cattle up to the hills uh, uh, and invite uh, the community, the broader community, to go with them, to join with them in this ancient tradition, which really captures not just the importance of these traditional farming systems, but also what they give to us uh, as a society, that what they give to us in terms of tradition, culture, biodiversity, landscape. So it's a lovely way to acknowledge that, the Burn Winterage uh, weekend. And the walk this year will be on uh, the 28th of October in a place called Abbey Hill in the North Burren. 
And so how long will the cattle stay up on the, the burn landscape? Will they come down for, for calving? It depends. You see, the wonderful thing in the burn is that every farmer has a different system. So normally cattle go up in October, uh, around October, and start coming down then in, from January onwards. But the old system would have them come back down in April when the first spring grasses are available in the lowlands. So normally around six months they'll spend on the hills before they come back down to the lowland pastures uh, uh, during summertime. And what about the impact of that on the on the biodiversity and preserving the biodiversity of the burren? Um, if if winterage wasn't happening, what what then? Well, if you didn't have the system of winter grazing, and that's my introduction to the burn twenty years ago, was as a researcher uh, to identify the fact that if you take winter grazing out of the system, the flowers start to disappear, and what replaces them are rank grasses and ultimately scrub, hazel, and blackthorn in particular. So which are a nice habitat in themselves, but they're replacing some of the rarest and best grasslands in Europe. So without farming, we don't get the biodiversity. And that's why we must support uh, technically and in terms of resources, but also celebrate uh, the role of farming in the landscape, which is what the Winter Weekend is all about. And so what is the, the ultimate aim of the Burham project, of the Burham programme? What is the ultimate aim for that uh, down the line? You have funding now for another five years. Yeah. And what's the ultimate goal? Well, I think we're looking now, uh, thanks to the Department of Agriculture, we've got funding for the next five years, which really allows us to, to develop and to really work hard with the farmers to improve the condition of the landscape. But beyond that, I'd like to see this program continue and expand in the burn and the ideas from this program be adopted elsewhere, as they are being doing at the moment through the EIP process, which is, which is really fa fantastic. But in future, I'd also like to see the burn farmers benefit more from their role as custodians of the landscape through maybe um, agro-tourism or through new product development or through education. I think farmers are the best educators I've ever come across. Uh, in my life because they've got such an authentic relationship with the land because so much so many great stories to tell and I think they have a role uh, a new role in society as well as, as teaching people about the connection with the land and with nature because we're all getting so divorced from the land and from from agriculture these days I think farmers can play a role in that in the future as well. And the success and achievements of the Burren have been widely acknowledged in Europe in recent years. And you also have an award ceremony taking place next week, uh, Farming for Nature. Yeah, so we, we had this lovely award system in the Burren sponsored by Borbia over the years where we celebrated the farmers who had achieved most under our programme because we wanted to say thank you to these guys for doing such a wonderful job and also to put these guys up there as role models for really sustainable farming because they're producing good quality stock and actually increasing stock numbers in many cases, but you're also managing this amazing environment. And it worked so well um, uh, in the burn, we decided to try and see if we could have a national awards uh, system because I meet farmers all the time who I think are doing amazing work. It's easy for academics or policymakers to tell us what we should be doing for nature, but these guys who do it every day on the ground, they should be thanked and they should be celebrated. And that's what we're doing today. And we're also saying that this is what, you know, farming can be like, you know, not everybody is going to be green, green, environmentally green. Are but in really productive land, working exactly. on really productive land. Exactly, but of the six uh, shortlisted finalists this year, we have farmers from some of the best land in Ireland, but they're bringing their community with them to actually incorporate environmental uh, concerns um, uh, into their farming system as well. So there's people from Ackle, there's people from Cork, there's people from Wicklow, people who are doing great things for nature and deserve to be uh, rewarded. And not only that, they should be the spokespeople, not me, but they should be the spokespeople for nature uh, and farmland in Ireland. So we're delighted to welcome the finalists to Clare this year and I'd encourage everybody to look at the videos and to vote for these farmers because they're great people and we'd love to see uh, uh, the public support them and acknowledge the role that they play for society. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Brendan. And uh, we also have to say congratulations to yourself because you were awarded a doctorate at NUI Galway this week. So congratulations to yourself on all the work that you're doing. Yeah.